Hey guys and welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, the space program where we build things just too dang heavy to fit on our launch pad. So obviously there is only one course of action open to us. We're going to have to save this up and pull out. I hope no one is offended by my premature withdrawal, but you know, that's the way it's got to be sometimes. Uh, we're going to fast forward our time at the same time. Well, it would have been at the same time. But we can't whilst we're fast forwarding. But yes, at the same time as doing our launch pad upgrades. There we go. We are infinite on everything now. So let's get back and talk about this vehicle. This is the first of two launches headed towards the surface of the Mun. We are building an outpost out there because, you know, once you've got your guys, well, your tourists, sorry, up to orbit, then over to the Mun, you want somewhere for them to go. And I want somewhere interesting for the... Ah, uh, I need fairings. So that dragon juice failure has caused me to reconsider my flight path, and by dragon juiced I mean we've got a big bulky thing up on top, not that we put it in a skirt and told it to tell jokes. What we're actually going to do is head up vertically for a substantial portion of our flight path. This is to make sure that all the drag profiles lines up with our thrust profiles, uh, and then when we get up to the slightly thinner bits of atmosphere, like up here at 20 kilometers, we will not be like pulling it down so hard on the front because there's not so much air to pull down. And once we're up to the point where we can lean over to the 45 degree mark, I am confident that we can do whatever it is we need to do to make sure we can get up into orbit. Beautiful bit of staging there, highlighting one of the other things I had done to make sure that we uh, like reduced the amount of drag on the front. I, of course, put aerodynamic nose cones on the bottom of those pods up top there. We'll explain what they actually do later uh, with some decouplers on. So we had this beautiful throwing of uh, debris everywhere but thankfully we're on a suborbital trajectory so everything is going to return to the atmosphere and burn up. Of course we're looking to park this at a roughly 90 kilometer circular orbit and then what we'll be doing is taking our standard trip to the moon, wait until it is coming up just over the horizon, push up our Apple apps to about 10 and a half thousand meters and that gets us to, well, here, just inside the moon's SOI. We didn't really need to watch all that did we? The things to take note of here are of course my angle of entry and those little items there that you can see on the surface of the moon. What we have to do of course is get two crew reports one above a certain altitude and one below a certain altitude and then two eva reports and that is where we are going to put our first manula outpost and not just the first manula outpost it is of course the first tourist destination of any worthy note on a different but heavenly body which i think is something worth getting excited about as you can tell i'm getting excited about it so the trajectory we need to fly to go and uh, hit all those points needs a little bit of careful planning so i think what we're going to do instead of watching all that is jump forwards a little bit to the ceremonial deployment of the engines yeah uh, this of course is our habitation unit for the surface base uh, but we needed a way of getting it down and of course the best way to do that is with the tiny engines on the underside of these command capsules there that you can see coming down I personally was quite surprised to find that the fuel would flow through the command capsules up through all the robotics parts down through the uh, structural parts and into the engines but it turns out no that is an a-ok -okay design right engines firing it's time to get ourselves onto a landing trajectory first thing we need to do is get ourselves as lined up as possible with those three markers not as easy as it sounds when you've got like such tiny engines and also trying to keep down nice and low without uh wasting any delta v if i just pointed directly towards the um normal is it normal i can't remember the one that changes the inclination if i just pointed directly at that i would be pushing my periaps up at the same time so obviously i want to look a little bit towards my retrograde to make sure that it stayed down that my periap stayed down whilst i was changing the inclination as well but we're past that now and we're trying to aim our way towards getting those uh crew reports so this is going to be a relatively simple process all it means is that we need to change our flight path as we're coming in uh, to land not the hardest thing in the world to do in fact it is something that i've done quite often and with the help of the maneuver nodes it should be a nice easy thing you can see we just like change things a little bit on the fly as we are going till eventually we find the situation here where we can just throw in our throttle on full blast and just get ourselves headed towards i'm only really r aim roughly aiming for the points where i'm going for here because i know that these um these markers are actually quite wide. I've seen a lot of complaints on the internet about how you have to be so precise and so on the ball. But to me, I don't find that is the case. I find that it is very easy just to get like as close as I need to be. Quite, I mean, you saw there I was a good portion of the, uh, of the map away from it there. And that was more than fine enough. Going for the second one is nice and easy. As you can tell, I am having no troubles with this. So I think what we are going to do is actually jump forwards a little bit until landing. So I've been managing my trajectory in map view to make sure that the end of my trajectory ends up in the middle of that um, double set of craters over there. Mainly because that's where the EVA points are. And now we're just trying to 
bring our horizontal speed down enough so that we don't go shooting over the top of it and also our vertical speed down enough so we don't go slamming into the floor at a ridiculous rate of knots and by managing our throttle incredibly like gently and also making sure that we uh, keep well on top of our retrograde markers we managed to put down in not really the best position it has to be said i'm on like quite a massive slope here so i made a quick sick made a quick quick save wow that was a bit of a tongue twister uh, and pushed myself towards the middle of the crater floor here i still didn't quite make it all the way to the middle like that flat bit down there and i blew up the supportive base so that is obviously a quick load right there so we're gonna try again you know we're, why not we're gonna lean over do a do a quick burst on the engines i am worried about how much fuel i've got here i'm, I'm really worried as you can see we are down to six bits of um liquid fuel and that far off the floor we ended up with no fuel so um whoops one more time why not we, we we can get this we can really get this i have more than enough ksp hours underneath my belt so i should be able to do things uh with a bit more finesse just a little bit better and the way that i am going to do that is by rearranging these arms to make sure that my engine is lower than my fuel tank so that even if we do run out of fuel it's the engines that will hit first and one now that we are landed they are completely useless to this mission so i don't mind if it, like they actually die or not um, all we need them for is to make sure that we land safe on the other side of this little hop that we're doing here and with a little bit of another hop in the other direction we actually have eventually managed to land down safely nowhere near the ideal spot that i would like to be but that's okay we've done it for long enough now we've made it a little bit further and we are safe so it is time to deploy this i give you the mun carousel this this is the whole point this is exactly what we are doing we are here to do it is a five kerbal station that goes round and round in a circle. Isn't that great? This isn't enough to fulfill the contract that I've got though, so we need to make a second launch. This is just cool all on its own. In fact, have a few extra seconds of cool just on me. Look at it spin. Look at it go. Majestic. Suddenly, a wild flurry of engineering opens up. We have more conditions on the outpost contract that need to be met, and I can tell you that the orange fuel tank is very important. We need at least 2,000 units of fuel, and the only fuel tank that actually carries that within itself is the orange fuel tank. So we're going to send that up. We also needed to take the... Uh, docking port with us there that you see up top and now we are working on how we can get it to the moon and land um, Getting it to the moon not so much of an issue You can see I've got those side engines on the side there That is all we really need to take take with us to be able to put it down safely What I'm worried about is now landing on my wheels and driving away uh, I knew this was going to be an issue from the very beginning This is why engineering had to happen, but eventually we reached this point here Mun base beta to go with Mun base alpha, obviously. First thing I think we need to do is try and get ourselves into the... Oh, or we could watch it explode on the launch pad. That last one was obviously just a time warping issue, so we're going to let this one go after dawn. And as you can see, I have completely forgotten to put any struts on it, but this is okay. We have not, like, instantly disintegrated, so we're going to see how this does. Uh, it's got a little bit of a wobble, but even through our first staging, we seem to be doing okay. But then suddenly everything explodes, and we've just got bits flying everywhere. The only thing, really, that we can do at this point is just wait and see what happens so the first thing i'm going to do is try and nullify my speed my horizontal speed obviously so that we are coming down within the cloud of debris because it's always nice to come down at the same time as everything else i am then throttling my engines to try and come down at the same time as that bit of debris back there that had all the fuel on it and then as i hit the floor bits go everywhere and the explosion carried on for a good couple of minutes um obviously this is sped up quite a bit and it went quite quickly with the strutting issue taken care of, it was actually quite a nominal flight. Uh, the only issue I did have was, as you can tell from this takeoff here, it was quite sluggish because my to weight ratio is pitifully uh, low. I don't have any main sails at this present moment in time. I've not been able to open up the technology tree that far. Uh, so what I had to do was use the uh, boosters around the outside in sort of a staggered motion. You see how I've still got some left to carry on the, the lift there. In fact, so heavy is this ship, I don't think that at any point in this lift, even when I was running on eedy bitty amounts of liquid fuel, did I break the to weight ratio of point to, uh, point two, of 2. Despite its weight issue, we managed to stage well and carry on pushing up all the way to the outer reaches of space. Well, you know, low, cur low curb in orbit. And whilst we're up there, well, I just happened to look at my map view and then I was like, hmm, we seem to be a little bit close to like our orbiting station. I wonder if we can get anywhere near it whilst we're making this orbital manoeuvre. Uh, unfortunately, no, no, we, we missed it by quite a ways. 
which was unfortunate. With orbit attained and being such a damn hand at this, I set a collision course for the moon, make the appropriate wavy gestures with the rocket engine, and finally select the moon to perform some fine manoeuvres on my orbital path, but no! We end up with the Collins craft! I'm, I'm not entirely sure how I did this, I even did the little focused view thing. But yeah, let's head back. Here we are having just crossed the moon's sphere of influence and the flight plan calls for us to burn any remaining fuel in this lifting stage into our retrograde so that we can bleed off as much velocity as possible before dumping it onto the very surface of the moon we are about to land upon. Our next concern is of course lifting our periapsis up out of the surface of the uh, planetoid there. We're going to do that mainly through the radial burn that is 90 degrees towards our direction of travel just to lift it up and make sure that our inclination is uh, nice and equatorial there. Procedures for landing on the moon are nice and simple. We uh, get down to our periapsis and circularize, uh, aiming for about a 10 kilometer circularization. Well, that's what I always prefer around the moon. And then a little bit later on, we make sure that our inclination kicks up at just the right time to make sure we are pointed directly towards base. And then starts one of the more trying hours of my life. This took exactly one hour and one minute from this point until my touchdown. Thankfully I had the presence of mind to save it just as I was coming over the top of this particular crater here. So I had somewhere to come back to that wasn't too far away. Uh, I I had envisaged that we were going to have some problems here when I was testing this thing on Kerbin. Uh, it literally, the, the side engines had no power to help uh, turn it over. So I knew we would be having a little bit of issues with the weight here. But we've got a poodle on the bottom here so that should be nice and nice and strong. I am thinking of two things. Obviously, I'm thinking of two things here. Uh, my horizontal speed and my vertical speed. But also, how little thrust I've actually got. It's going to take me a long time to be able to slow down from this uh, hundreds of meters per second. You can see it counted down there. That is at full throttle. Uh, and it is literally sort of maybe two or three meters per second uh, per second acceleration change. Another concern of course is that we are coming uphill from the crater so the ground is actually coming up to meet me a lot faster than our vertical speed would indicate. So at this point I'm doing all that I can with the poodle and the large fuel tank underneath me to bring my horizontal speed down as much as possible whilst making sure I'm not also plummeting out of the sky at too fast a rate that my engine will not be able to overcome the impetus we have already built up in that time. All the fuel in the poodle has been spent though, so it's time to uh, kiss that goodbye and let it smash into the ground somewhere away, and then start trying to slow ourselves down with these two uh, LV909s on our side tanks here. Now, I knew when I put these on, and after the testing in Kerbin, as previously indicated, that this would be a bit of an issue slowing down here. The thing I didn't realise was just how much of an issue it was going to be. Indeed, you can see the twin crater of camp back there, and burning all the way from here to here, I am still coming down at an incredibly fast rate, indeed I am a mere kilometres off the floor, maybe even mere metres, and I've still got 50, 60 metres per second to build up blow off. I'd obviously way overestimated the push on those engines, and for some reason that was not a lesson that I took, on, took to heart very quickly. Uh, so here we are, back after a bit of a quick save, we're going to warp forwards a little bit, and now start trying to burn away. Uh, I was thinking that maybe if we just like go full throttle from a little bit further on, we didn't have a little bit of a break in between, then maybe that would work. Unfortunately this really was not to be, indeed we were taking so long about it that I was actually in danger of shooting over. It actually took a lot longer to shed off some of our horizontal speed than I thought it would do, especially compared to the last flight. I thought we'd done it a lot quicker, but there we go. Base went zooming underneath me and I knew what was lost here. I mean, I was still going to try and bring it down just in case I could drive back, but the speed that that uh, crater up there was approaching, I knew everything was over at about this point here. Though, we did have an interesting uh, shower of bits. Everything just kind of flew away. It took a little bit of a moment to jump around from bit of debris to bit of debris. And the, the range was quite impressive. The story of the second landing attempt was much the similar as the one that has just been. Because, uh, you know, when you've made a mistake, why not like really drive the point home and do it twice? The only difference here is you'll see that the decoupler on the bottom didn't really let go of its cargo. So we've gone in with... Oh, I don't know how much more mass, but it was quite a lot more mass. This time there were no crashes, no big explosions, no scrabbling for Delta V as I'm trying to slow myself down before I slam into the floor at an awkward angle and too high a speed. No, this time I was quite controlled. Unfortunately, we were in the middle of nowhere and I was like, you know what, it'd be quicker if I just tried again. 
Eventually I managed to get my ranging right and didn't find myself going over the top of the base at a thousand miles per hour or slamming into the floor well short of it. I actually managed to bring myself down in quite a controlled manner onto a nice level bit of ground so that we could come down for a nice gentle landing. Everything was looking good, everything was looking fine but we found that suddenly, suddenly I just went out of control and I, I, I don't, I don't really know what happened there. Now though, we have an acceptable landing site and all I need to do is try and figure out how to land there. So that time we got onto our wheels, that was all good, but I put the brakes on at the wrong time. We ended up going sideways, rolling around and ended up with all sorts of horrors. And the next decent attempt at landing didn't really happen for another two, two attempts or so until we got to this one where I'm coming down incredibly slowly. I'm feeling good at this. All we need to do is put down onto our... Oh, well, we were going to put down onto our engines, but it just broke off at a funny angle. But with that encouragement, here we go. We're coming down even slower, even gentler, uh, but facing the wrong direction, which means that when we land, we, we try and uh, fall backwards. That's okay. We'll just push ourselves up a little bit more, try and save it again. But for some reason, no, it's just not really going to work out. And I just get stuck here like this. And the moment we topple around past those side fuel tanks, it's over because we can't get back onto our wheel. Until eventually, 55 minutes after I made that initial quick save, thinking this might be a little bit tricky, we are eight kilometers away from our landing site, coming down on what I know to be a relatively flat area of the Mun. Taking our time, but still not wanting to take too long to get down there because obviously landings, they take a while, it's always going to take a while, and I am a person of limited patience. And to say that this section of the mission tested that patience to its very limit, well, that's more than a little bit of an understatement there. But here we are, less than 10 metres off the floor, I literally do not know. We are looking in the right direction, we finally put down. Yeah, like... Ah, oh, so much joys at this point. Made a quick save and now we've got about half hours worth of driving to do across the flat plains of this mun. Not really too much to, to go into here. I'm not going to subject you to the same level of detail as we did with the landing. But I'm just going to show you all the acrobatic bits, the explosions and eventually we make it to the, the base that we are headed for. Amazing! So just two things to do before we can say that these contracts are complete. One of them is to go out with our Kerbal here, Jebediah Kerman himself, the valued man of the PR department. Uh, he needs to go out and do all the EVA reports that we need to do to get this uh, this contract done. The other thing we need to do is of course get him out and connect up these two vessels. Now the problem with that is I completely forgot that Kerbal inventory system sort of overrides the whole grab thing so that when you want to try and move something from one to another you actually need a screwdriver or a tool or something with you. So we can't actually finish the base at this present moment in time. That will be a job for the next Kerbal that comes along indeed Jeb's relief that comes along uh, but that EVA we can definitely do, especially with our jetpacks being on our back. So two things to do before we can really get out and do our thing. First is to refill our jetpack by getting in, and second is to try and figure out what direction we're going from. And that's not as easy as it sounds on this big grey expanse like this. I mean, you could almost call it featureless if it wasn't for the fact that I was using the feature of the, the uh, craters here to figure out where I was going. I had a look on the map, I found out that the other crater is to the south of me from where I am, and I also know that the EVA points are to the south. So that little wiggly ridge line over there is the one that joins the two craters together. So let's fly on thus away. The first thing that I'm really aware of coming in for this ridge landing is the fact that it hasn't popped up with that yellow text telling me that I need to like do my thing. So having a look up I can see that I need to go east. Now bearing in mind that one crater is to the north and one crater is to the south of me. All I had to do was make sure that the appropriate crater was on the left or right of me before making a flight along the ridge line and finding that beautiful spot just here where I need to stop and make an EVA report. And indeed as I am a Kerbal of the people I start to say something dramatic and point about the plight of Kerbal Kind in this grand universe before I'm drowned out by random radio static. The second site I found using the similar process of looking at the map knowing that I need to go east, but unfortunately I didn't quite slow down enough before I hit the floor, so I made the EVA whilst grinding my faceplate down to nothing on the dust, which, you know, is kind of alright, and I located my target to head back to and thought, well, this is fairly simple. I'm going to use the fastest method of getting over there. That is, of course, taking note of how far away I am, 
pushing forward until I am half that distance. So I was 2.2 kilometers away. As soon as I get down to one kilometer, I'm going to stop pushing forward and indeed start thinking about braking and keeping myself off the floor. This is also another big consideration here. But if you do it at exactly the halfway point, you come down to a beautiful rest not too far away from your vehicle and then suddenly for no reason have a crash and not one of these sissy i don't really know how to fly my spaceship so i'm gonna smash it into this floating pile of rock type crash no no the full-on windows does not like what you're doing i'm gonna boot you out and possibly freeze up for a bit yeah, it was that type of crash which was very difficult to deal with and and quite quite stressful but thankfully it managed to save it just as jebediah's feet touched the floor so everything is all safe and fine we get back to our base with very minimal of problems and as we set it up to do the things that we were expecting it to do to wow all the tourists i.e spin around in a circle while we're looking at it i will say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys i will see you next time where we've got to at least bring up a kerbal capable of taking off those uh, connector ports off the base and attaching it to that fuel tank over there to finish that particular mission but i'd also like to get some tourists up here but anyway yeah i will see you then when we're gonna do that Bye!